everybody, this is Laura here, and I am um, going to show you a tutorial on our newest feature, which we call Tracer. So a really good use case for Tracer is if, for instance, you have an inspirational photo that you'd like to build a quilt out of. Um, we had, this is actually a feature that came from a customer um, request of being able to import um, a picture and then build a quilt out from it. Uh, another good use case is if you buy a quilt pattern and you'd like to uh, visualize it in your own fabrics before so you can build out a coloring page for your personal use um, of preparing for that quilt. And so there's a lot of great ways to use it. What I want to do is capture an image of what you're going to be using as a tracing um, image. Uh, what I've done is I've gone to the Robert Kaufman website and looked at their upcoming or free patterns and I really liked this one by Ariga Wilson called Palette. Um, unfortunately the pattern itself isn't available until next month until July of 2022 but we get enough inspiration off of the image as well as uh, the overall dimensions of the quilt to get us prepared for when this pattern is available and also to start visualizing what it would be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this quilt top. You don't have to be perfect about it. You can just, all you need to do is make sure that the entire quilt is, is quilt top is in the frame. So I just took a screenshot of that and then I'm going to go and put that into the quilt that I'm working on. You can either create a new quilt um, and this will start you from scratch or you can put a tracing image um, into a pre-existing quilt that you've started. I'm going to actually use with um, use this one called palette which is the same name as the pattern because I've already done some legwork here with the color tags and um, and I want to be able to leverage that. So before the video, I created all the, the color tags here to the best of my ability off of that screenshot. And of course, once you put this in, you can always tweak them. And what I'm going to do before we put the tracing image in is I'm going to start using some of that intel I have on the on the overall size of the quilt to, to prepare the grid for importing the image. So if this quilt is 54 by 66 and there are 9 blocks in 11 rows, we can use that information to do some quilt math, figure out that the blocks are 6 inch squared finished and there's 9 columns by 11 rows and that gives us that 54 by 66 quilt image. And this is gonna be really helpful for making sure that we get our inspiration image uh, to the right size and place. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is go into the quilt settings and the top button is called tracer. So you click on that button um, and then you upload the image. So when I click on upload image, I'm gonna find that screenshot that I took I'm gonna open that up. There it is, great. So right now I don't really see it. Um, there are two reasons for that. It could be not on, so you can turn it on. And then also the cell opacity here. So this slider, what this does is it's at 100% opacity, meaning it's completely opaque. And that means that the quilt grid in pre-quilt is completely covering the tracing image. But when you start using, you know, changing the cell opacity, now you can start seeing the tracing image that we're gonna use as our inspiration. So I see it enough here. I know that I have the entire quilt top captured. So then the, what the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to shift so that the top left corner of this quilt is aligned in the top left corner of our quilt grid. And so you can do that here um, by using your up and down arrows to move it in. Okay, so I'm gonna just keep moving this until just a peak of the binding is hidden. And then I'm also gonna offset it on the left 
until just the peak of that binding is hidden as well. Okay, so I feel pretty good that the quilt is aligned in the top left corner. And now what I need to do is play with the scale to get the bottom right corner of the image also aligned with the bottom right corner of the quilt. So this works as well as same and I'm just going to use the up arrows until I have that quilt block um, stretched out or the quilt image stretched out. I can go back here and also um, play with the top left because that did change just a tad bit when I scaled it. Okay, so now I'm a little too big. I'm gonna go down and again shift that. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect. The idea of this is just to really help guide um, what we're working on. So I have all of the blocks pretty well aligned with the cells of the grid as well. And so I'm gonna just stop there and leave this the way it is and start building out the quilt in pre-quilt now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save this so I don't lose anything and I'm gonna go back into the design and now start placing my quilt blocks here um, and start filling the grid. So I, I built out this quilt block already um, and so I'm just going to, to select everywhere where it's the, the pink background with the red triangle and there's a few there and so I'm gonna select those and then add the quilt blocks to the quilt. So you can see those um, lined up great because I'd already put them in. Sorry about that. Um, the next one I'm gonna do is then working on the inverse where it's the black, the red background with the, the pink triangle. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna clone it and then I'm gonna edit the block. And instead of pink, I'm gonna call this red with pink. And then I'm just going to link these sh shapes with the new colors now. I'm gonna save to quilt. And now I'm going to select all the, the cells where it's red and pink, and I'm gonna add those to the quilt. And so, they kind of all fell in place too because I had already done some work before and and deleted them so sorry about that. Let's work on a new one. So I can see here that there's a brown um, background with I think that's red and we can always go back if you're not sure and you want to be able to see with more clarity you can always go to the tracer and hide that hide the quilt top a little bit more. So I can see, yes, okay, that makes sense. It's actually um, a red, a different red than the first red um, and brown. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to half and half here so I can continue working. And now I'm gonna go back to the design. I'm gonna clone the block because it's still the same um, overall block but the colors are different. So I'm gonna edit the block. I'm gonna click on the background and I'm gonna change that to brown. But I notice that it's a different red. It's not that same dark one. So I'm gonna create a color tag and then I'm gonna choose like a more orangey red. Whoops, sorry. I have to change that back. On this one, on the pink, I wanna start using that new color which looked more like a like a lighter red I'm gonna save that to the quilt I forgot to rename it so I'm gonna go brown and red too the different red and now I'm gonna select um, where that one is at okay so then I'm gonna add that to the quilt. And now you can see that these are not aligned correctly because there's this shadowing. 
So that's also a really helpful indicator that things aren't necessarily lined up properly. So now I can just click on that block and rotate it until the two overlap and it removes that shadow. So I do that. And this one. Okay, always remember to deselect. And then I notice here too that I missed a brown one. So I'm going to go back, add the brown one, and that luckily just is in the right orientation. I'm going to save that. So now you can continue on doing um, the same steps to fill out the entire quilt. And if you're, if it starts becoming like, okay, I feel like I'm, I've gotten everything correct. Um, I'm going to make sure you can always then just hide the tracer completely and you, and I can see, okay, I missed a block right there. And then I can go back and change it. pretty much the quilt design layout lay, like completed and now I can actually just go and tweak the colors and see if I if I like all those colors if they go together the way that I thought they would um, so for example this putty I might I might may, make a little bit more of a cream or champagne um, that's the things that you can then tweak afterwards And then what I would like to do now is just kind of turn the tracer 100%. I can turn it off. I can also see that maybe I used the wrong blue here or maybe I like it that way and I'm gonna keep it. So these are all things that you can kind of do after the tracing. And the final thing that I'd like to just um, show because I, I kind of always just like putting in the binding is I can go in here and I can now select some binding that I really like. Um, I guess they had like the purple um, or I could do the gumball and now that is a complete ready to use um, quilt, quilt visualizing tool. Um, so again the tracer is a great use case for when you want to be in use an inspirational photo that you took or something that you really enjoyed and you wanted to have a little bit of a tracing component to it or if you've bought a quilt pattern and you'd really like to create a, a digital coloring page for your own personal use to help get you prepared and select the fabrics for your quilt. Uh, thank you for joining us and have a good day. Bye.